the Excess Noise podcast with Mark Miller. Hi everyone, welcome to episode 50 of the Access Noise music podcast. Thanks for downloading. I'm your host, my name is Mark Miller, and on this week's podcast, I speak to James and Chloe from Wings of Desire about their fantastic new EP, Amon Ra. If you missed last week's episode, Lee Campbell spoke to Mark Lanigan about his new project, Dark Mark vs. Skeleton Joe, with Joe Cardamone. So check it out, and if you like the podcast, it would be amazing if you subscribed and shared with your friends. If you want up-to-date music news, album reviews and interviews, then check out our main website at accessnoise.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Here's Access Noise writer Dan Lynch with some highlights of what's on the website this week. In the review section, Michael Barron gives Fever Dreams, the new album from Villagers, an 8 out of 10 score. Michael says that with piano, horns and influences of EDM, Villagers frontman Conor O'Brien has created a quirky non-pop soundscape that can be instantly appreciated. Pressure Machine is the seventh studio album from The Killers. Aaron Kavanagh says the album is a mixed bag and focuses more on having a consistent narrative around faith in small town America than a standout radio hit. He's given it a 7 out of 10 score. Finally, Bastille have given fans a glimpse into their new sound with a live performance of their new single, Thelma and Louise. With punchy drum machines and 80s synths, the band say they're revolutionising their sound ahead of a new album. Watch the video now at accessnoise.com. Wings of Desire were born out of a need to understand the world. James and Chloe are a couple that spent many a night obsessing over their favourite musical eras and fiercely debating everything from 60s counterculture to the human condition. What naturally came together was a musical project that conveys the complexities of life against an immersive and sentimental backdrop. I have been a huge fan of the band since I heard their fantastic single, Be Here Now. So it was a pleasure to sit down with James and Chloe to talk about their new EP and much more. So sit back, relax and enjoy the Access Noise Music Podcast with Wings of Desire. Hi James, hi Chloe. Hi, how are you? Very good, how are you guys? Yeah, we're well, we're well, not bad. Cool, cool. Thanks for taking the time to do this. That's all right. I've been wanting to speak to you since I heard Be Here Now. So, you know, oh, nice. it, so it's it's such a treat. And hopefully we can go back to where, this, where you started and about the, obviously the new EP and stuff. Yeah, sounds good. Which, yeah. I've, which I've been really enjoying. The first song from Wings of Desire I heard was Be Here Now. I love the sound and the meaning about being where you are supposed to be and, and living in the moment. It, it's it's such a great uplifting song. What can you tell me about the genesis of that track? Um, it was kind of like, it was this weird midway point where um, we'd kind of like broken up our last band and we were in this no man's land of just not knowing what to do. Didn't have any like band behind us, didn't have a manager, didn't have a label. Um, and we were just kind of just in this like, uh, like a, limbo. this limbo period mm. that was just really frustrating. And then the, the lockdown hit. Um, and so it's just out of that pressure, uh, this song just came about. Um, and yeah, it was just about dealing with the past. And it's just kind of like, a, it's like a fuck you to everyone, really. Everyone that we dealt with in the past and kind of, you know, like people we've been a bit pissed off with and all that sort of thing um and it was about you know kind of healing from that and uh starting afresh and um yeah just finding peace in kind of living in the moment a bit more and you know discovering different different aspects of yourself and and trusting yourself trusting yourself um yeah and i like i stopped drinking and stuff during that lockdown i started like meditating and trying to just be a bit bit more like a better person and uh the song's just about that. If like the verses are kind of like the anguish and then the chorus is like the... Chill out. Yeah, <laughs> the resolve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's funny because you can just overplay like situations and things that happened in your head like over and over and over again. And it just drives you absolutely crazy. And um, yeah, that's... It's what... a reminder to not do that. Yeah, so it's a reminder just to like, 
you know, break that cycle and, and break away and, and, and find yourself. And I feel like everyone's gone through that period because I feel like the lockdown and COVID, it's, it's pushed like loads of people into these kind of like tight spaces together. And, you know, you don't have that normal release of going out and doing what you want. So I feel like a lot of people had to, you know, process stuff, process stuff and deal with, you know, close friends and, you know, spending more time with family and stuff, which is also a beautiful thing. But it can mm-hmm. also bring out like a lot of tension as well. So, yeah, I feel like everyone went through that period last year. And I know we're just coming out of it now, but, um, yeah, I feel like it represents that whole that whole year, really. Go, going back to the start, when did you both uh, develop your the, your love for music? You know, what, what sort of music was being played at home when you were growing up? What music well, did you like? Well, my mum is quite a big music, isn't she? she yeah. Had, we always had quite a lot of records. I remember being like 14 15 being like I've have you heard of this band the Smiths and she's like yes I've got every record <laughs> and um she was a big Pink Floyd fan quite eclectic yeah we had there was lots of music around but um I think for me it was definitely going out on a Saturday buying a, a record um getting really into going to local gigs and things like that that got me into yeah I, I just, being I was... obsessed with music Obviously, I went through that terrible stage of liking like The Offspring and things like that. <laughs> but um, I always, I, I always like, <laughs> I always like alternative music. <laughs> you know what I mean, so I think I, I grew, I grew up on like The Clash and yeah. just different types of punk music, really. And then I got more into like indie music, so like I guess what the Maccabees and that kind of era. Great yeah. band. Uh, their their second yeah. album, Given to the Wild, is tremendous. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I, I love that band so much. Um, and yeah, and then I got more into kind of like proto-punk stuff and, you know, late 70s New York, um, obviously early noughties New York, like the Strokes and, and bands like that. And yeah, just like always guitar music, really. I mean, yeah. I went through like a small phase of, of liking um, a bit of like electronic music. But it always kind of tends to lean more towards guitar music. Obviously, we're big into like New Order and Factory Records, and then also the whole like '60s counterculture movement, like the Velvet Underground and that whole scene. <laughs> so basically, we like a lot of music. Yeah, and <laughs> we like eras. a lot of eras. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I feel like our music spans spans through those kind of eras. Yeah, I mean. yeah, and obviously, yeah, like David Bowie, big fans of David Bowie. Um, and smaller bands, can you think of any smaller bands that we like? Yeah, but it's more like what you liked growing yeah, up. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, um, yeah. Probably nothing that cool no. when we were 15. <laughs> <laughs> well, you touched on it at the start um, about the, the, your your previous band then having. Um, yeah. I was very, very surprised to hear that the band split up. What, what happened? Um, it just fizzled out, really. I, I think we yeah. did a big American tour with Pearl Waves. And we just lost steam, really. And I think everyone just wanted to do different things. And as you know, it's really hard to like keep four people all happy, happy in a band, and and especially financially as well, like keeping everyone above water. water do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's tough. it was really tough. And um, but you always say like, there's all those stories of bands that tour America and split up, the Sex Pistols, like because it's. When you do those American tours, it's, it's pretty grueling, isn't it? I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, we had the best time, but that probably brings out a lot of problems as well. Yeah. And yeah, we did our last show in New York, and then I think everyone was kind of like... Done with it. We, really. we were going to definitely take a break, weren't we? Yeah. And work on another record. And then this kind of started to grow. And then I guess we were slightly more excited about this than doing the second in Heaven record. So we kind of, you know, ended up just following this path instead yeah well me and Chloe actually stayed in New York after the tour and we, we just um did a we just rented somewhere for two months and we just met a load of people and we started to like just don't know just started to absorb the city a bit and um it just started to really change the way yeah. the music sounded I think it gave us a bit of a direction for what Wings of Desire is and that didn't necessarily fit into the in heaven mold that we'd kind of created so this mm-hmm gave us a bit more freedom I think yeah I think that's how I feel yeah I think this we wanted to do something that you know we wanted to create a band that 
we could kind of make anything we wanted and it would always kind of work. Whereas I feel like in heaven, we boxed ourselves in a tiny bit. Um, but I'm not saying like, I feel like it'd be great to... Revisit? We'd love to, I'd love to revisit it at <laughs> yeah. some point. If, if people cared <laughs> enough about it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I feel like we've got a lot of Wings of Desire records in us. And then, you know, I'd, I would love to like play another In Heaven show at some point. Yeah. What was the what was the first song you wrote as Wings of Desire? Um, was it zero zero one? No, I, th- I think it was. Um, yeah, it was running. I think yeah, running yeah. was the first one. Yeah, that was the first one, and that was kind of the sound that ended up. Yeah, it just kind of happened. Really, there was there wasn't loads of thought put into it. It just kind of happened. To be honest, all we knew is that like. It's kind of like, you know, when you get to the end of something and you, there's suddenly there's no more like avenues to go down to. I feel like we got to that point within heaven. There was no more, there was no more options or doors to open. And we were like, oh, just felt a bit stuck, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and then the running, obviously running came about. And it's like, oh yeah, there's this. Let's try, let's go in this direction. And yeah. And then the artwork changed and yeah, just the whole vibe changed really. But yeah, it's been really exciting. It's been like a big old... You know, starting all over again, sometimes it's quite nice. It's quite uh, exhilarating, isn't it? Yeah. Creatively, especially. Yeah. Because there's no rules. They're like, mm. you can just make whatever video, whatever song you want, and it just feels really good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, well how does it work? I mean, there's only two of you, and there's a lot going on with your music, mm. and, and you, you're saying about the videos and stuff. So so who does what? And what's the process? What's the songwriting process between the both of you? Uh, yeah, well, it just depends, really. I write a lot uh, just on my own, and yeah. I'm into production as well. So I produce the songs, and then you know there are songs we collaborate on as well. Yeah. But also Chloe is Chloe does all the videos and and the artwork and stuff like that. And then the photography side of things we do together. Yeah. Um, so it's a really nice, just like what's the word, uh, unit like. And like we don't really need anyone at the moment, which is great. We call it in house. In house, yeah. <laughs> um, There's been a lot of um, vocals in the bathroom, haven't there? Yeah, we just record it. You know, we re- we record our flat basically, um, and yeah, did nothing spectacular, just like a laptop and a few keyboards and guitars and things like that. He's playing it down. He plays literally everything on the record. So. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then, yeah, I think that's where the label side of thing comes in because we'd really like to um, be able to help, you know, younger bands kind of like, you know, because we've learned a lot through a lot of touring and dealing with different aspects of the music industry. So it'd be cool to help other bands and give them a leg up and help yeah. them creatively and help them record records they're proud of, do you know what I mean? Um, so that's definitely something we want to go into after we put out this album. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll put this one out first. Yeah. So at the moment, there's just yourselves on the label and then further down the line, what, 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 yeah. what sort of uh, what sort of artists would you be looking for? Well, uh, we've been sent lots of demos actually, for, which is really exciting. And it's been really nice to hear, you know, young up and coming artists projects. It's more, if we could put something out tomorrow, we probably would, but it's more the, you know, the boring, financial business side of it to make sure we can do those records justice isn't it yeah but definitely yeah I think we'd obviously we don't really want to because we're in such an early stage we wouldn't want to sign someone and, and yeah. not have and not get, the facilities it, yeah. for them do you know what I mean like because you need a lot of money to promote a record so I think yeah. we'd like to partner up with someone yeah. um before we signed our other artists because yeah. I feel yeah. like that's the most responsible thing we could do yeah but I think we mm-hmm. can rely on ourselves to put out our own records that's fine but um yeah I think to get to that level would be cool to I mean we'll probably put out a couple of singles or something do you know what I mean but, but I, to, I think to do, to do album, a proper album campaign for someone else you know we'd need to partner up with someone but artist wise just there's kind of no rules just someone that something exciting something that feels authentic yeah uh, Actually, we we love so many different genres don't we so I don't think it would be very yeah. specific and just depends. Depends if just yeah, who's into it. I always feel like you know, build it and they will come. So I yeah. think when we start playing live and things like that, we'll just start to draw in like-minded individuals and yeah. and be able to put out some cool records. Does it feel good that you're in charge of your music and the label, and you're not really answering to anyone? 
Oh yeah, God. Yeah. It's just great because we can just release songs whenever we want and we never had that ability before. Um we had a yeah. we you know, we used to have to wait for like months on months on end just to get approval from from everyone. Like, like do we like this one? Yeah, okay, yeah. let's put it out. Um whereas with this, I mean our first, with this we released like four songs in it felt pretty quick. In a from couple September of months, till, yeah. through till December, we just kept releasing music. And we just wouldn't have been able to do that. And I don't think that's technically the done thing. I think you're gonna, you know, do the campaign and things like that. But we have such confidence in the music that we kind of feel like we should just keep putting it out and hopefully people will find it, discover it and we'll be into it. Yeah. I think the best music, you know, spreads through word of mouth. So Yeah. The I think you just it just has to be attractive and like yeah, it has to be a talking piece, do you know what I mean? And I think the songs are good enough and the visuals are good enough for, that it will travel naturally yeah. without necessarily... Pushing it too yeah, hard. without it necessarily being shoved down people's throats, do you know what I mean? Well, you're about to release the second EP. Now, correct me if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Amon Ra, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Did, did you go into the recording with an idea of the kind of songs you wanted to write about and what kind of so- uh, sound you wanted to have? um not really i always find uh, it it's, it's quite an intuitive process really and um it's a bit like a puzzle you have the first piece you have the second piece and then suddenly you don't know what's going to happen you don't know what's going to happen <laughs> and all of a sudden it all makes sense towards the end yeah just before you're about to release it you're like oh yeah that makes total sense now um so you never actually quite know what you're getting into and uh, in fact if you put too much of a constraint on things it can like kill it can kill the creativity i think like the concept album yeah if you decide yeah. beforehand yeah well, i feel like you should always decide the concept at the end <laughs> <laughs> all right so um but yeah but it, it definitely feels like a um like a step up from the last ep um sonically so i'm really excited about the now yeah i think it, it feels different i think we've kind of discussed before but the the first ep is definitely more looking at the outside world looking making observations and I think this is a little bit more internally focused yeah for sure if that makes sense mm. <laughs> yes yes it, it, it does absolutely and, and that's what I like about the band you know you know it's the stuff you talk about and you know I've learned for example today I learned what Amon Ra means he's the Egyptian god of the sun yeah. and air and his, and, his, and his name means the hidden one um yeah, yeah. I didn't know that, so I found that <laughs> out today. And uh, yeah. so, so wh- why did you choose uh, the name the EP after him? We you just... literally turned to me one day and you said, "And it will be called Amon Ra," and I was like, "Ah, oh, okay." <laughs> I can't remember. We we're just we we're just getting really into like. Well, Chloe's like a big fan of like ancient Egypt, ancient yeah, Egypt. And guilty. And, yeah, and it just seemed like um, I just like the idea of it just being like. Uh, What's the word? We get we go down a lot of like internet rabbit, rabbit holes, holes yeah, for yeah. sure. And we're just we're just like <laughs> getting really interested in uh, Egyptian technology and and the things they they developed. Yeah, that potentially could have been. Um, we could live in a different world now. Yeah, they potentially yeah. had better technology than us, and it's like, how did they get that stuff? Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, we're just like really into all that weird stuff. Yeah, <laughs> there's pyramids on the moon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Explain. <laughs> and, and Mars, I think, and, and I think also the Antarctic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. Uh, hidden pyramids. You know, there's loads of like, um, is it like there's there's these mounds in Eastern Europe that look like they're definitely pyramids. I, I can't remember yeah. what they're called. But yeah, they're all over the place. So there's so much like, there's, there's just so much hidden um, history and mystery. That we, yeah. We, you know, we barely know anything. I can't remember, isn't it? Like we've only explored 95, no, 95% of the oceans oh, are unexplored. Yeah, something. yeah, something. That's, that's true. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You know? So like, yeah, we don't really, I think once you realise you don't know anything, then you can, you're can. you starting in a, in but a productive I, place. <laughs> I actually find that really comforting because before I used to get, you know, really stressed and full of anxiety about not knowing what's happening, not being in control. I think the moment you kind of let go and go, ah, oh, we know nothing, that yeah. just feels really reassuring to me. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, I think the more you the more you meditate and things like that, like you the more you deprogram 
yourself like you just become way more open to discovering other things about yourself yeah. about the world about history um and it's just like a really it's a really great thing and uh, yeah i would encourage it if anyone is that considering <laughs> meditation it's amazing <laughs> well i don't know about meditation that you know it's, it's, yeah. something, it's something that i would definitely consider but i've certainly went down plenty of rabbit holes on youtube yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think everyone did in lockdown like, yeah and you know just one thing leads you know the other you know mm. although unfortunately um a lot of the good stuff and a lot of the good people who are talking about stuff you know they've sort of deplatformed them on youtube which is pretty unfortunate yeah, yeah. i was i find that like there's the there's you know with that it, it does kind of bother me because i feel like you need both extremes of an argument to develop a balanced opinion on something you know and i, I don't think you should just delete things that you don't agree with because even if you don't agree with it there's, you, there's something to be gained from it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like you can't just take away opposition. You, you need both sides because, you know, both sides could be wrong, <laughs> but yeah, but it's sure. still important that they're there. So I think they both are wrong. That's yeah, the point, so, isn't it? <laughs> so that you can judge and make yeah. and inform your own balanced opinion or something. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely... It's slightly worrying time. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I agree with, with, with what you said, definitely. Uh, first single from the EP, Choose Your Life. It's been getting a great response with loads of uh, radio play. What can you tell me about that track? I really enjoyed that. Uh, Choose Life. It, you know what? It was like I really wanted a, a song that made me how I used to feel, like going to like Reading and, you know, and Glastonbury and things like that, like growing up. Um, and that just kind of like free feeling of, just like being with your friends at a festival and getting wasted and having fun. And it's like, it harks back to like the LCD sound system, like justice era, like yeah. that I wanted to recreate. And that, I think know. also, like we discussed before, the idea of you've been on a night out or been with your friends and then you're on the way home and the sun's coming up and you put your headphones in, it's got that kind of like yeah. feeling. Yeah, it has. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it's just a, I guess, just having so much time to like uh, reflect, reflect on, yeah. on yourself and your life during the past year and, or, or whatever. It, you know, it's definitely harking back to like growing up and things like that. And Which yeah, I think lots of people are doing the same, aren't they? Yeah. And I think you take a lot of those things for granted, like being able to just go out, go to a festival and not have to worry about anything. And during lockdown, I definitely missed that feeling. And um, yeah, so yeah, it's just it's meant to encapsulate that 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 summer free thing. <laughs> so we might never have again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my favorite track on the EP is "Forgive and Forget." It, it, that's an absolute belter. Do you have a particular favorite on the EP? Um, yeah, I think. I actually, yeah, I think Choose Life actually is probably my favourite. Yeah, Choose, and, Choose Life and Forgive and Forget. I'm, yeah, yeah, obviously I love Forgive and Forget as well. Yeah. Um, I love, it's kind of got like a widescreen Americana thing about it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for people to hear that song actually. That's an old song. That's really old. That's actually like, that's got to be towards the end of In Heaven, that, yeah. that tune, hasn't it? So actually, maybe that was the first thing to desire. So. Maybe. I, I, yeah. I kind of, they were learning all, something. They were, all, they were all written at the end of the American tour. During yeah. like a, there was a brief period just before Corona. And there was, I had, did a lot of work then. But it's never like you write or we write for a specific project. The songs just come when they come, don't they? Yeah. And so. You're almost not in control of when they come. They just come. And it's, um, Yeah. When they come, it's just magic. But, but you can never sit down. You couldn't sit down like a nine to five mentality and be like, right, today I'm going to do this. I'm going to write that. Like so, that some happens. people do, though. Or like Damon Albarn does that. Yeah, it? and yeah. obviously that works for him to a degree. But I mean, niche reference, but Dolly Parton, she calls it her, her God time. Yeah, yeah. She's written all those crazy songs, like these amazing hits, whether you're a fan of hers or not. But she says she just sits there and they're just literally planted in her head. <laughs> and I love that. Yeah. Well, it's Bob I Dylan. Mean, Bob Dylan's a good question Bob Dylan, where he's like, he says he's just the receiver of good songs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, he just receives them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And Noel Gallagher as well. 
he Noel Gallagher was like, yeah, they he, Noel Gallagher reckons they already exist somewhere. He's just picking them up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah no yeah. one knows where it from, really. <laughs> but but a lot of people say the exact same thing. No, um, yeah. I've mentioned Noel Gallagher in a, a previous podcast. You know, he calls it. Go, it's like he's going fishing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, just, yeah. You just like Dave, yeah, David Lynch says that as well. Yeah, he calls it catching the big fish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there, yeah. there's definitely something in it, definitely. Choose life. I love the DIY nature of the video for Choose Life as well. It's great. Do you do you enjoy putting the videos together as well? Yeah, I do. I, well, we obviously the ideas are together, and then I kind of do the editing side of things. Um, but yeah, it's quite methodical, but in a cool way. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I enjoy, we enjoy it. Yeah, I feel like it represents if you can get the message of the song through a visual. That's like all you want to do, really. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think it's worse. You know, when like someone, we've had a few times where we've had like someone else make a video, and I feel like when you lose that control, you lose like a bit of the magic, don't you? Like, yeah. I always find when it's just just Chloe and we're just having fun and filming. I don't know. There's it just captures something that we can't quite get when yeah. we do it in a kind of more what's the word like not Ste- like sterile and yeah um, i yeah. think videos can be sterile and it, it can it's a really fine balance between sterility and and magic isn't yeah <laughs> like, and also we film in like quite often public places and mm-hmm. i think if you're there with a the whole load of camera crew and trying to make it really professional i think sometimes the performances are really inauthentic mm. and you feel embarrassed because there's all these people watching, but it's pretty like Gonzo, isn't it? We just have the Super A and we, we just, just go, go for it, stuff, yeah. and it definitely feels more more relaxing. Yeah, yeah, I but think that comes Chloe, across. Chloe's yeah. an amazing video; like she makes amazing videos. You know, she's very talented in that. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't take that away. Like, also, I think you've got a real eye for Thanks. a great music video. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I enjoyed them. Is there a particular subject or theme that you would like to write about that you haven't got around to yet? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I feel like a good songs just kind of catalogue your life in a sense, don't they? So yeah. once when you go through different things in your life... You, you just, different things you, come you, up, don't yeah, they? Yeah, different things come up. And you just write about those different emotions and different things that everyone goes through. Um, yeah. There's no, again, I think the more I try and think, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that, the, you know, the less likely it is to I'm come. I'm bad at that because <laughs> I'm always like, well, why don't we do a song like this? Yeah. And it's just like, just no. Just, it will happen when it happens. Yeah. So it's like you can't be like, oh, I'm going to write a song like this because it yeah. will just be terrible or just be pastiche, won't it? Yeah, I feel like just the right songs come at the right moment. But mm. You obviously have to have the skill to do it to do it but i feel like there is an element of channeling well you've recorded two amazing eps do you have any plans to release an album anytime soon yeah yeah we'd really like to obviously we want to start playing live soon um and then hopefully we'd love to put out a record early early next year or maybe next summer the plan Um, is definitely 2022 isn't it like yeah ideally like the first half of the year because it's almost ready so that would be nice yeah and I feel like last year and this year, just, you know, I think most of the music industry was a write-off and things are just starting to pick up again now. Um, yeah. So we did our best releasing as much music as we could during this slow period. But I think as live picks up and, and people start playing again. Um, and we want to do it justice by yeah. being able to play live and hopefully some more people will know the songs so yeah. by the time the record comes out. Yeah, and obviously yeah. in heaven we built that purely through live shows, really. So I this think is a new way for us. This just is, putting records. Yeah, out. so I think we'd like to definitely spend the next, I don't know, year playing shows and then yeah, release an album within that period. Yeah, cool. within yeah. the year, it's within, coming. Yeah, within the year, it's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it is recorded. It's been ready for a long time, so yeah, we're just. Gagging to put it out, really. What's what song from the EP or, or any of your tracks can you not wait to play to a live audience? Ooh. Actually, weirdly, so like 
from re- when we've been rehearsing, I actually love playing Zero Zero One, the first song we put out. Yeah. That really works. Like. I- it, it, that often happens. The ones that on record might not necessarily stand out as much. That feels like a big old belter, doesn't it? Towards the end, yeah. It's really like I think just that. I think that would be quite an exciting one. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing that one, especially. And um, running also sounds good. Like yeah, running. Obviously, being out is going to be <laughs> wicked, but yeah, yeah. Series yeah. two ones really like. You know, I think because morph, those, ones, something else, those like. ones are a bit more like low key on record. So whilst we've been rehearsing, I think they've stood out to us because like, oh, actually, yeah, that's like that really works. Yeah, yeah. Well, smaller music venues they've been struggling because of COVID and lack of funding. Mm-hmm. How, yeah. how how important were those venues for you guys when you were starting out? Oh, oh, the small venues. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, we wouldn't be able to do it without without yeah. coming up through the ranks, sort of thing. So yeah, I just I really worry for what's happening and also there's some because obviously there's a lot that are owned by you know like the mean by the bigger promoters but then you've also got like brood and and leeds there's lots of completely independent venues which you know are pretty sacred aren't they yeah i mean they, they need to be protected at all costs so yeah. you know i hope that people are announcing tours now and i hope those things can go ahead so these guys can you know, get, get their livelihoods back. Yeah. And like, I always feel, you know, these venues are like schools, really. That's where people, you know, find out who they are as performers and, and players. And I feel like without yeah. having that structure there. How can you go from here to... Yeah. Uh, it's going to yeah. be, yeah, it's a pretty scary place because how are people, people aren't, can't just go from a bedroom straight to playing like an, you know, O2 Academy or whatever. Like you yeah. need to do those small ones you need to learn in the small ones don't you and also as like fans when I was a teenager I used to literally go to the local venue every couple of weeks it wouldn't even matter what band was on it was more just to be like part of something yeah and that's really important as well for for fans isn't it yeah of course yeah so yeah I mean I hope you know I hope there's some sort of I don't know rescue Mission. mission going on right now because yeah. yeah it's getting scary but it's also psychological isn't it because it's like i don't know if lots of people are going to want to go back because they're so scared to catch yeah. COVID. like it's, mm. it's quite complex isn't it it's not just mm. the lack of support for those places it's more like society has kind of changed slightly yeah it depends it really but hopefully depends, not yeah um but yeah we need those venues especially you know like for the younger ones out there, uh, I just don't know how we'd be able to run a small independent label without having venue, anywhere for them to, to play. Our bands <laughs> yeah. On. yeah, your your songs are very euthoric, and and they offer advice like "Be Here and I," "Choose Life," "Forgive and Forget." What's the best advice you've ever been given? Best advice I've been given. Ooh. Um, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> what about the kettle doesn't boil if you watch it oh my god that's awful, that's awful. <laughs> well, it's true though it doesn't happen if you, if like... that's not how it goes that's also not how it goes <laughs> what was the saying <laughs> don't eat yellow snow yeah that's yeah, a good one that's a good one my, my dad's one is um, me- measure twice cut once that's a good one <laughs> he's also a decorator so it's about wallpaper yeah. but it can be you can use it for life mm. yeah what about the, what about in the music business? You know, what's the best advice maybe in the music business you've been given? Uh, best advice in the music business, I think, to not um, you kind of have to like perform actions without thinking about the fruits of your actions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it should really be about the process of just enjoying music and wanting to play and wanting to put on shows like you shouldn't think about the end result of what you're doing yeah for sure if, you, if you're ma- if you're making music to like you know get however many streams or do this or do that you know you're not going to go anywhere like you have to, you have to love what you're doing yeah that's the main one yeah someone said to me like if you don't love it people are gonna know you can't be doing it for accolades or whatever yeah. it's it's for love or yeah. go home basically yeah that's you have funny. to love it because yeah. it takes so long and, and it takes you know planting those seeds and watching them grow it takes a long 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 time um and i know you see the odd person come out what seems like nowhere 
But if you look into that person, they've often been doing the rounds for a long, long time, either in different bands or different whatever. Yeah. Um, it's quite rare that someone just comes out off the bat and it's like... At 21 yeah, and written this beautiful album or yeah. something, yeah. If you look into most people, like they've been around and they've done, they've done the work, do you know what I mean? If you're not willing to put in the work, then you're not really going to get anywhere because it's hard. How ambitious are you guys as a band? What would you like to achieve? I, th- I think it's changed. I think we're definitely ambitious and want to be able to perform and sustain this as a life for forever. But I've definitely become more content with putting out great records and being really proud of that rather than it being the accolade at the end or you've got to be headlining this festival or that to to feel like you've earned something yeah if that yeah. makes sense i definitely find just putting out great art is really rewarding now yeah i love there's a patty smith um what was it i don't know if it's a quote or just something she said and she was like don't worry about the success just yeah. worry about putting out good art and eventually that art will have its own currency and I think that's the best way to think because mm-hmm. you've got to think of just your art as like a long-term investment, investment in yourself. In yourself. <laughs> and if you're not putting out music you love, then then what are you doing it for? And she's just a great example of someone who's done the, you know, like Iggy Pop mentioned, the long buck, <laughs> 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 which is you know, you know where where it all accumulates into something. But you don't always feel that way when you're younger no you're, you I'm think, sure Patty you know, Smith through that, a lot of it was like oh what the fuck you know, <laughs> you I mean like yeah. or Iggy Pop or, you know that was another band that broke up after a big American tour yeah. the Stooges <laughs> and yeah you know you can never like I said you never know the bigger picture till till uh till the end so yeah all you can do is just keep trying and everything happens for a reason yeah exactly sure. yeah just a few more questions, guys. Uh, I like to ask my guests the following questions. Out of all the music in your collection, which artist or band do you have the most albums by? What do you I remember? know what mine is because they're also inherited. If we're talking actual physical records, that would be David Bowie. David Bowie. Because my mum has every record and I've well. got them even... Even Lodger. Yeah. <laughs> Those, yeah. So that, as physical as that would be. I mean, that's pretty boring because obviously he's the... Yeah, the I mean, mine's probably The Clash. Uh, you know, yeah, true. I love The Clash. And they're just a band that I've always gone back to as well. I've, I've never got bored of them. Um, Even that really long double album. Sound of Easter. <laughs> yeah. Sound of Easter. <laughs> oh, I still love that album. I mean, it's great. Um, but so, yeah, I think, yeah, probably The Clash. We've got a lot of further underground records. I don't have many. Yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got all of them. We got all of them. <laughs> well, all the Sex Pistol albums. Yeah. Yeah, all yeah, of them. All, yeah, yeah, yeah. all, all the In Heaven stuff as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one album. Which, which, which song or album is your guilty pleasure? Which Sorry, one? which song on what album? Which song or album is your guilty oh, pleasure? Ooh. Song or album is guilty pleasure. Well, there aren't, there's no such thing as guilty pleasures, apparently. Yes, yeah. well, some people would say that. Uh, I mean, okay. it, it depends. Yeah. It, it, like Bruce Springsteen, but yeah. I feel like Bruce Springsteen's kind pretty of cool, cool over in England. But like, whenever when we were in the states, and I said I like Bruce Springsteen, they just thought I was. Like, oh yeah, we went to see Bruce really? Springsteen. Yeah, yeah, we went to see him on Broadway because that was like the hot ticket, wasn't it? Yeah, and we yeah. tried everywhere to get these tickets, and we were like right at the top, and we were like, yeah, we were the youngest people there by about twenty five years. Yeah. And then afterwards, we went to a cool party with some kids from like the Bowery and they were like oh my god Springsteen they were like we thought that was only for like Republicans and like <laughs> really? and old people and we were like oh we well, yeah. really like him yeah I love Springsteen so yeah that's not a guilty pleasure um what well, I'm trying to think there must be someone I guess like just like crappy like I don't know like like I said the offspring or something when I was younger or you used to like AFI. Is that embarrassing? <laughs> well, yeah, but I wouldn't listen to that now. <laughs> no, but like some of the bands you like growing up, maybe. But a band yeah. you listen to now, I can't think of one. I mean, I, I quite like a bit of like the odd, like pops, like a bit of pop stuff. Yeah, I like sometimes. it. I like it, the odd, the odd Ace of Base track. <laughs> uh, or like the Good odd, um, like I, yeah. I can appreciate like Taylor Swift songwriting. Like, 
some of that kind of super. Oh, actually, that's quite a good one because it it does pop off on Spotify quite a lot. Yeah. Like I did listen to the album a few times. But you can, <laughs> I appreciate some good pop yeah. songwriting. And last one, what have you been listening to recently that you could recommend the readers? Or sorry, not readers, anyone listening. <laughs> oh yeah. I've been loving that um it's a new, I guess, artist or band, I don't know, artist called uh Wonder Horse. Um and the song's called Teal. I think he used to be in the Dead Pretties, which were like a South London band, and that's like one of the best songs I've heard. In a long time, actually. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Such yeah, a good song. Right? Really... He's such a good, he's an amazing song. Right? But we've only had one song, but I'm, I'm yeah. hooked. I must check yeah. it out. Yeah, Wonder Horse. So it's like W-U-N-D-E-R, horse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who else? Anyone else? That's like the best thing I've heard in ages, Wonder yeah. Horse. Yeah, so that's been on repeat, yeah. basically, this week. Is it on Spotify? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it only came out a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, definitely check that out. No, yeah. I'll go after this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, what's next in the immediate future for you guys? Well, I think th- obviously the EP is coming out on the 13th of August, and then we are going to do some live shows. Yeah. Wow. Watch play. the space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you don't go into another lockdown. <laughs> playing a gig. <laughs> we're, we're definitely playing a gig if it, yeah, if yeah. it can happen. So yeah. that'll be. It's September time. We're gonna try and do, make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So excited. So yeah, it's just about a kind of um, yeah. It, it's like one foot in front of the other sort of thing. You do, you can't really plan too far ahead at the moment. So yeah. you just have to do your best. Um, but yeah, we definitely really want to play live so badly. I mean, because it's been since 2018 when we last played. So we only play live in our bedroom at the moment but yeah we obviously rehearse and stuff but it's not yeah. the same you get you don't get the energy back you're just giving it out i mean yeah <laughs> so i can't wait i can't wait to play yeah mm. well hopefully sometime you can come to ireland maybe when the album yeah, comes out yeah, we never got to play ireland in yeah. heaven it's really annoying yeah but yeah i've been to ireland obviously a few times and i absolutely loved it yeah. so i'd love to come back actually we were looking we were looking at um island the other day because of steve lamac because steve lamac has been playing us on six music quite a lot yes. and he he introduced us as an irish duo yeah so Did we? yeah so know. we're like i don't know where that came from <laughs> so like maybe we should just move that yeah, yeah. i'm sure we, yeah, i'm sure we got confused with someone else <laughs> but yeah Listen, guys, I'm really enjoying it. I will enjoy everything you do. As I say, I've got a playlist of all, all the stuff you have on Spotify. That's why I wanted to talk to you. I'm really enjoying the EP. So I wish you all the best with it. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you, much, thank you so much for interviewing us. Yeah, thank you, really appreciate it. Not so a problem. Oh, is it really cool? Well, hopefully you'll yeah. share it on, on your socials. And uh, yeah, sure. hopefully I can talk to you when the album comes out. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Perfect. Cool. Looking forward to it. All right, thanks, mate. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a good night. Bye. 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 The Excess Noise Podcast with Mark Miller.